Yes, time for a repair video. We got a big induction cooker which has one of its coils uh, malfunctioning. So we will take this apart and uh, let's see if we can find, find the fault with it. And if this video gets too long, I will make a part 2 of this so we can see everything in detail in this. So yes, this is a pretty big induction cooker. It has uh, four coils. We can put the pots on. And it got this uh, capacitively con uh, coupled switches. And these are coils. They should look something like this one. And, or they can actually be two mica plates together. And the lit fire bounded in the middle of them. And on the back there will be some of these uh, ferrite cores to concentrate the magnetic field upwards. So I will not plug this in, I will take it apart first, because I, if it's damaged, if it's damaged, I don't want to ruin it any more than that. Here's the back side, held together by some uh, Torx screws, we got two fans, and maybe there are like, the modules are maybe like here, here, and here, here with the heat sinks, the circuit board goes in like that. Maybe some kind of rectifier board here that provides power to all the four boards. Maybe the rectifier board is broken. Maybe one uh, one of these modules are broken that had popped the rectifier board. The cables should come in here. Some wiring diagram. Some uh, numbers. Yes, here you can see the numbers on it. We got the serial number here, the model number, the voltage and the power. I think that's the power when all the four inductors are turned on. Mayel made in Germany, so this is pretty good. Here's the wiring diagram. 200 to 240 volts says this to neutral. This says that you must use the neutral, otherwise it will blow something up in here. Let's have a look under this lid. And we saw on the label which was in that direction, that how we can plug this in. They have two of these uh, bridges here. Why do they have bridged that, those two? They have bridged it in uh, this configuration here for use in two phase. But maybe I want to try this one to connect all the three faces to it. I will remove that bridge. Yes, I just begin to remove this bridge here. Like that. And now the neutral connects here and the three faces and the protection ground. So now I need to somehow remove this plastic. We got these holders here. There are no holders on the front here. So maybe I can push it out or maybe it's screwed in from the back side and or it actually from the top side. This is the back side. So I need to actually remove the screws here so I can get access to that. So let's begin to remove the screws. Yes. Now the screws are removed. They are pretty greasy. Let's see if we can lift this up. Pretty greasy under here. Need to clean that up. Yes. This is a special glass. And here we can see the inductors and the control board there. Yes, now here we can see all the inductors. That one's pretty small, that one's pretty big. And they're like all together like with some clips here. And if we kind of look like this, you can see this looks like two mica plates. And the lit wire is wound in the middle. And here we can see the ferrites. One here, one here. The control board. Got some LED seven segment displays here and these uh, push buttons are actually photoelectric i think the glass actually conducts this uh, infrared and it sees when you put the finger on because if the glass actually reflected the infrared it wouldn't see your finger on it and here you can see a closer look at this uh, control board we've got this buzzer here and here are the photoelectric uh, units now i have removed the screws here and disconnected the wires and to the thermal cutouts or thermistors. So let's see if we can uh, remove that. Yes, yes, this looks good. And uh, here we go. 
I've turned the light on and now so you can see a little bit better. Have somebody been in this one before me? I think so. I'm missing two fuses here. Why have they removed the fuses? I have no clue. There are various the third fuse. I thought this was three phase. L1, L2, L3. Is L3 not connected anywhere? You can use a three phase rectifier for or maybe you can't. No, you you can't do that. Not if you have a external neutral. Yes, of course, now I understand why they use this one and it runs on two faces. But why even bother having the third pin there? And we got these bridges here, which are actually fuse holders. But we got like a pipe in there instead, instead of a fuse. Same with those two. We got fans here that blows air over the heat sink and out of the back here. Yes, as you can see here on the circuit board, we don't have a huge capacitor for smoothing the input. We just have this little capacitor here, little one over here. So that means there is still a 100 Hz ripple that makes this transistor go a little bit, uh, dissipate a less bit power. So otherwise we will have too much power. Yes, sadly this have blown. Why have they blown? Or some of these capacitors broken maybe? Or maybe the inductor is faulty? These should be RGBT transistors. Because this unit here actually gets its power from the power supply up here. There's a power supply here. And this looks actually like some kind of gate drive transformer, but that's not. It's some kind of isolated power supply. We've got these two units here. There are separators separating these uh, low voltage electronics from these high voltage electronics here. And they have uh, two channels. One, each channel is for one pair of IGBTs. We've got this nice gate driver here. And here you can see some of these uh, current transformers. Senses how much current is going into the plates or the inductors. And if it's too much current, it will regulate that. Yes, let's have a look from this side here, when, where the mains connector is. We've got these empty fuse holders. That actually looks like they're shorted together. Are they shorted together? Let's measure that. Yes, that beeps. That one too. So yes, they are shorted together. So why even bother putting a fuse holder there where they are shorted together anyway? Oh yes, L2 is connected to this one, L1 to that one. It's got its own relays here. Here is the power supply. We've got something that looks like fusible resistors here. Interference inductor, a whole bunch of capacitors for smoothing. Control drive chip, this transformer here, optocoupler here. And a bunch of smoothing capacitors on the output. It should be like 5 volts and 12 volts. 12 volts for the fans and 5 volts for the control circuits. So let's open it up, removing this unit here and see if we can replace those two tra transistors. Let's remove these pipes first. And they are actually pipes. Not kidding. Here we go. Big circuit board. There's the back side. And the hard part is to remove these holders for the transistors and getting it back. How should I really remove that? Should I do like that maybe? Yes, that's good. One off. The hard part will be to get it back there. Oh, look at that. That's Totally blackened. It looks a bit strange actually. It doesn't look like the transistors has blown. It looks more that they have been shorted to this case. Because when a transistor blows, often the middle part cracks or something like that. This looks more like it has been shorted to this one. And it has shorted to this plate here. And these plates aren't actually grounded. They are floating. So one transistor needs to connect to this plate first, the heat sink. And when the other transistor shorted there, kaboom, this happens. So let's measure the transistors. Maybe they are okay. So yes, let's desolder those transistors and measure them. They are connected here and here. 
Let's first do a little investigation on what happened. Here we got the two transistors that are shorted together by the collector. And here's the coil that heats your food. Here's the current sensing. And you actually shouldn't draw it like this, but I did it anyway. We got the half bridge capacitors. Negative, positive. And actually you should have some wires like that going to the gate driver. Here we got the PVM signals. Something like that, they're opposite to each other. That happened was that this part, this one collector, they're often connected to the case. I'd short out this collector here. That means that this has happened. This transistor is shorted. So what happens is that the positive here is now connected here. We've got the positive here now. So what happens if this transistor turns on? Horrible stuff. This will like explode. Because all the current now goes through here through these transistors to the negative. So let me blow this transistor and it will shut the fuse. So let's remove that one for a second. And take the breadboard in with some LEDs and some resistors and the two transistors here. Ignore that one, that's another project. So yes, let's plug it in, 12 volts. And this one lights up. So if I short the gate, this is the gate, and I'll short it out like this. It's still on. So that means that this is shorted. And this one seems like it's open. But if I touch this one, and touch the positive here, it turns on. If I touch the negative, it turns off. So that transistor here, it's okay. But this one here is shorted. How much I do this, it doesn't affect the LED, it's still on. So this one is blown. I should try to find a replacement. Or maybe I can use other IGBTs. I just have to know that they are the same. Same char characteristics, like the gate capacitance and the threshold voltages in the gate. So I will try to look around a little bit, if I can find another IGBT, another pair of IGBTs that can solder into that. And this video is getting a bit too long now, so I think I will put that part in the part 2, where I change these uh, transistors, and we can uh, have the test and see if it blows up, or if it survives, or if there is anything more wrong with the stove. So yes, hope you found this video interesting, thanks for watching. Part 2 will come soon.